All right, it's time to put all our work together in chapter 10. What we're going to do is we're going to take everything that we've learned, which are these basically essentially are like little tools in our toolbox, and we're going to use them to basically answer some very difficult questions, but they're actually difficult questions that become way, way easier when we have uh, energy analysis in our toolkit. All right, so this first video, and I want to keep these fairly short because they're big files and I don't want to take a, So this is going to be, this, uh, these videos are going to actually be a series of videos. So let's just get started. I made some little notes to myself here on the left of the screen. All right, so whenever you're thinking about energy, there's always going to be a system. So in this regard, it's like conservation of momentum. So when we were applying conservation of momentum to answer problems, we had to think about, okay, what's in our system and what's not in our system? So everything inside the system is going to be internal. So where do I want to say that? You know, that's internal stuff is in the system. And everything else is external. The entire rest of the universe is external and so it's really really important um, to think about okay what's in our system and what's not in our system now why do we care about that because let's go over here to this idea of transfer energy can be transferred into your system and it can be transferred out of your system but that will never, ever, ever happen with internal stuff. So if you've got just, oh, this is kind of abstract, but okay, let's just go with it here. If you, this is, if you've got stuff in your system, and it doesn't matter what it is at this point. Okay, this idea of putting caps on and off is, uh, okay, so we've got three things in our system, and Let's just say there's E and F and G and all these other things that are not in the system. Okay, well it turns out that if G or E or F or anything else outside of your system interacts with your system, and when I say interact with your system, I wanna think about a force acting through a distance. Remember, we call that work then that's energy flowing in. What's a good air color for energy flowing in? I don't know, green. Okay, so that would be a way that, well, the war, okay, we're, we're, that's basically energy coming into your system. The same thing would be true with E could do that, or F. And also, suppose that F, uh, okay, okay, just pretend if they're interacting and so basically so that's how you get energy in is if if something outside of your system is doing positive work on some part of your system energy is flowing into your system the total energy in your system is getting bigger well the opposite can happen is suppose part of your system is out there interacting with something that's not in the system and yeah, so this is basically C. Oh, C, it looks C is pushing on E through some distance D. Now your system is doing work out. Work out. This would be work in. Then that means energy is, what's my energy flowing out? I don't have one. Energy is flowing out. No, not W. Energy is flowing out. So that's basically the main reason why you really need to think about what's in my system and what's not in my system because we have to distinguish between interactions between the outside, between the environment. That's going to result in, at least potentially, is that's going to result in energy transfer. The energy in your system will go up. If work is being done on your system, the energy in your system will go down. If your system is doing work, positive work now, everything, I, I, every time I say the word work, assume it's positive work. Remember, positive work means if A does positive work on B, A is giving energy to B. 
Well, as A does positive work on B, B is doing negative work, taking in a Remember, um, if I give you $5, I do positive giving. You get the $5. Good luck on that, though. You're not going to get $5. But anyway, if you did, um, positive giving is I give you the money. It's very clear the money goes from you, at me to you. Well, when you take that money from me, in physics, I know it sounds crazy, but that idea is called negative giving. So I give you the money, you negative give, you negative give me the money, which means you don't give me anything. You take it from me. All right, so that's the idea of energy transfers. So let me just, all that clutter here, let's just throw that out here. So we've got our system and basically, only interactions with the outside world can result in a change in energy in your system. And your system can in turn interact with the outside world. So this is why, one of the reasons why we care so much about thinking about what's in our system and what's not in our system. And the best way to see that, of course, is by um, working problems and going through these because this is all a little bit abstract, but this is absolutely the big picture stuff here. The next thing I want to talk about is the energy transformations. And again, this goes back to the idea of a system. So here is some system and rather than think about objects now, I'm gonna think about forms of energy that might be in your system. So let's suppose that you've got something moving. Okay, well that means, and you, that thing is in your system. Well, that moving object in your system has kinetic energy, so we know there's gonna be kinetic energy in your system. Let's suppose that you've got a spring also in your system. They don't have to be physically connected. Like the spring doesn't have to be sitting on top of this, of the object that's moving. And again, this will become so clear by just doing examples, okay? But suppose that you've got a spring in your system and it's squished. Well, that means that spring has energy. And if it's in your system, that means you've got elastic potential energy in your system. And let's suppose that maybe whatever's moving is elevated from some low point. It's up high above where it could be. Or maybe you just got something else in your system that maybe it's not moving, but it's just sitting above some low point. Well, that means you're gonna have gravitational potential energy. And we're not gonna worry about thermal energy for the time being, because that, that'll just be a complication we're gonna add later. Well, these different things in your system can interact. Different things can happen. Maybe this car, maybe this is a moving car that's coasting and it's rolling uphill. Or maybe it's going up. Or maybe the spring is going to push on this. So there's all kinds of possibilities that can happen in terms of these forms of energy, whatever's going on, these forms of energy can vary. But let's suppose that the total amount of energy in your system was a thousand joules. So the total energy in your system was a thousand joules. And that may, okay, let's just throw some examples here. And let's suppose it was 500 joules in kinetic and you had a hundred joules in gravitational energy. And well, we know, okay. Well, how do I know how much spring energy? I must know because uh, 500 plus 100 plus this equals 1,000. So that's got 400 joules. Now, what can happen is these forms of energy can go, can change. And when you have energy in your system going from one form to another, those are called transformations, okay? So energy can transform. But no matter what happens, how complicated or simple, how exciting or how boring your system is, energy transformations will not change the total energy in your system. Okay, so that's a little review. We talked about that, seems like forever ago. Now, why would, when do transformations take place? 
Transformations take place when you have internal interactions. Internal interactions. So you need to be care totally distinguished between these two forms over here. Transfer occurs when the outside world does work on your system or your system does work on the outside world. And that's going to either increase the energy in your system or it's going to decrease it. Transformations are what happens to the energy that's in your system. And that's also going to happen from interactions. Remember, interactions just kind of basically means, hey, a force is acting on something else. And now particularly we're going to think about force acting through a distance. We don't call those trans transfers. Those are transformations. So internal interactions can result in energy transforming from one form to another, but they do not change the total amount of energy in your system. So if you have no external interactions, my friend and friends, then there is nothing I don't care how violent, how lovely, how terrifying, how anything, there is nothing that can happen inside of you. Oop, let me get my hand out of the way. There is nothing that can happen here that can change that amount. Okay? All right. Let's move on. We're going to stop that video, and then I think it's time to get into a problem.